A lot of people have asked me about the relationship between the command module and the service module. Namely, how did the consumables get from the service module into the command module such that the two spacecraft were able to separate before reentry? And along those lines, how exactly did they separate? We're looking at the relationship between the command module and the service module today on Vintage Space. For the bulk of any Apollo mission, the command and service modules were mated. The command module is the gumdrop-shaped spacecraft that the crew had as their main living quarters. It was also the only part of the entire spacecraft stack, the entire Apollo Saturn stack, that was able to return back through the Earth's atmosphere for re-entry. The idea was to take all the heavy things that you would need in space but not need back on Earth in a separate service module such that the crew wouldn't need to bring it back. The two spacecraft were mated long before launch. Apollo 13 gives a good benchmark. The service module was mated to its command module on June 30th of 1969, and the mission launched on April 11th of 1970. That's because there was no need for them to have separate lives. And because there was no need for the command and service modules to dock, separate, and redock like the command and lunar modules did, there was no reason to have a system in place that would allow these multiple procedures. Instead, they launched pretty much as one spacecraft. But the CM didn't sit flush with the SM. Between the two spacecraft was a 26-inch high fairing that held the space radiators for the electrical power subsystems. The CM sat on six compression pads on the top of the SM, and these areas on the heat shield were reinforced with fiberglass to keep them safe. The two modules were connected by three tension ties extending from the command module's heat shield to the six compression pads on top of the service module. These were basically stainless steel straps about two and a half inches wide and four inches long, bolted to the command module on one end and the service module on the other end. While mated, the command module drew power and consumables from the service module through an umbilical 18 inches wide and 40 inches long that stuck out from the side of the mated spacecraft. It held all the wiring and all the tubing that allowed the power, water, oxygen, and water glycol to flow between the two spacecraft. When it came time to separate the two spacecraft, electrical connections cut the wires and the tubing and closed the valves in the umbilical. By this time, the command module was operating on its internal batteries. To physically separate the two spacecraft, a guillotine mechanism using a stainless steel blade severed the ties connecting the two spacecraft. Once severed, the umbilicals stay with the service module, leaving the command module free to operate on its own. Already on a trajectory for re-entry, it used its reaction control systems to adjust its attitude and re-enter the Earth's atmosphere alone without the service module. So does that answer your question on how the command service modules work together and then separate at the end of the mission? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, any comments you have and ideas for future episodes that you'd like to see covered. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for daily Vintage Space content and with new episodes going up every Friday and occasional bonus episodes on Tuesdays. Subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.